Where Helen and Tim travel, a husband and wife duel with the goal to see the world one mountain at a time. And in this video, we will show you four beautiful places to visit in the Italian Dolomites. We will show the dramatic landscapes of this hiking mecca, and each of these top spots in the Italian Dolomites are uniquely their own, so make sure to stick around until the very end so you don't miss out on travel planning tips for your next trip. Aww. We took a few trains and a bus from Chamonix, France to Milan, Italy so we could pick up a rental car. And if you're planning a trip to the breathtaking Italian Dolomites, you can fly into Venice Marco Polo Airport, Milan Malpensa Airport, or Innsbruck Airport for easy access to the majestic mountain range. A car is recommended for flexibility in your schedule, but buses are available in the Dolomites and in the larger towns. We wanted to drive an inner end from the southern end of the Dolomites, so we stayed in Tueno for a few days so we could pass through Lake Garda, Bolzano, and stay in Cortina di Ampezzo for a week. We started our Dolomites journey in the western area in the Trentino Alto Adige region and worked our way to the heart of the Dolomites in the eastern part of the Veneto region. An underrated spot we didn't film as much when visiting the town of Moveno and the Madonna de Campiglio area, a lesser traveled part of Italy. It's known for its skiing, but we found major solitude on lesser known hikes from the Cima Groste gondola. The silence gave us chills and we didn't see more than a few people on the entire trail, so we highly recommend a stop here. It's also hard to nail down the best pizza we had in Italy, but hands down, we had some of the best pizza in the apple growing valleys in the town of Tueno, a quaint stopover for a few days before driving deeper into the heart of the Dolomites. So we stayed in Tueno, and then we drove towards Bolzano, past Bolzano, came through this mountain pass, through this mountain pass, over here through this mountain pass, and now we're in Cortina. If you only have time to stay in one area in the Italian Dolomites, you definitely want to stay in Cortina di Impezzo as a base camp for all of your Dolomite adventures. Whether you're drawn to its alpine charm, endless ski slopes, or the world-class hiking trails that wind through its rugged terrain, Cortina invites you to experience a slice of mountain life in a way that feels both real and unforgettable. We'll drop some helpful links for planning in the YouTube description, including our Airbnb that we stayed in in Cortina di Impezzo, and we'll definitely be giving a tour of our place later on. Good morning from the Italian Dolomites. It's just after 7.15 and we are hitting the trail early. We are staying in the Cortina de Impezzo area. And the great thing about staying in this town is there really are endless options of hikes everywhere. It's a really good base camp if you're coming to the Italian Dolomites. And the hike that we are doing today is part of the Paseo de Croci, a hike that is just more than popular. We drove by the other day. We saw like hundreds of people parked and we we're like, what is this area? And we knew we had to look it up on all trails to see um, what this area had. Today we are doing the trail. It's a little chilly this morning. It is the fall time period now officially. A really great time to come to the Dolomites during shoulder season. This trail is only 10 minutes away. Okay, hang on. This is pretty, I gotta get the shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's about eight to nine miles long. With quite a bit of elevation gain, you go up to a lake and then a refugio. It's a big loop and it gets quite crowded and that's why we're starting early. We read reviews on all trails that people started after 9, 30, 10 to about noon and the parking lots were completely crazy. It is a weekday. Uh, we are here during off season or shoulder season, end of September, kind of the fall period. So there are definitely less crowds on the trail we have noticed. So it's not a bad time of year and the weather is very mild and not super cold yet. So this time of year is certainly worth checking out. There are quite a few trails up here in the Paseo de Croci area, and today we are hiking to Sorapas Lake. It's common to find drinkable water, little springs that they have water basins at uh, through the Alps, including the Italian Dolomites. It makes it really easy for finding a filling station for your water. The train in the Dolomites is often pretty crumbly rock. Trekking poles are definitely recommended. Tim's like, where's your trekking poles? We bought a cheap pair from Decathlon. Definitely bring them, check them if you can. I'm gonna go, cause I can't breathe. 
we made it to our first trail junction and you got to love these trail signs here they're very detailed they have the trail numbers on them but we're heading to refugio vandelli or lago de sorpis The Italian Dolomites is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it's located in the eastern section of the Northern Italian Alps, a mountain region with 18 peaks over 9,800 feet. That's over 3,000 meters tall. The thing about the Dolomites is it's pretty exposed. A lot of rock fault areas, so you gotta keep moving and spread yourself out between the parties that are here because it definitely would not be a good day. This is incredible. The geology of the Italian Dolomites is very unique. The peaks are jagged and rough, and the mountains are composed of sedimentary carbonate rock and limestone that is over 250 million years old. Just made it up here to the pass. It is quite blown out right now with the late morning light, but wow, the views are incredible. You have the silhouette of the distant mountains in the valley just really have us thinking, hmm. Adding this to the top five, I feel like the last two months we were like, this is going on our top five, top five. I think our top five has turned into a top ten. We definitely recommend the loop because you get to see the upper alpine. Once we get down to lake, I'm sure it's going to be really busy because we are going to be hitting it up closer to the next let's say an hour-ish or something. If you have solitude up in the Alpine, I feel like that's all that matters and it's totally worth it. It always seems like when Tim gets the drone out to capture the beautiful shots, which I greatly appreciate, he always misses out on my snacks, my Haribo gummies. I finally found the watermelon ones here in Italy. It's been really hard to find the watermelon ones. They're my favorite ones of all the flavors and highly recommend it. You can definitely find these at many gas stations around the US. So just up ahead of us here is a little bit more of an exposed section. There's a section of cables that have been installed. It's not via Ferrata, so we don't need the harnesses, but we're definitely gonna be holding on to the wire because we are on the side of a cliff up here. So we just gotta watch our footing, see what's around the corner. So the section with the cable and the exposed area was not as bad as it looked. It's probably just 100 feet. Just have to be careful. The rock's a little slick, but you can do it. We are getting the first glimpse of the lake and it is very turquoise. The blue is out of this world and almost looks like blue waters from somewhere in the Caribbean. It's absolutely stunning because you're at the base of the mountains where I'm sure the snow runoff goes into and crystal clear waters. Cannot wait to get down to the lake and the refugio as well. It's pretty gravelly in these parts. Not so we made it onto the main trail from the upper trail that we were on. As you can see, there's so much more people and there's actually people coming up behind us. So we gotta go, bye. We made it to the lake and it is very busy right now. And it's very beautiful too. The blue is just some of the most pristine blue we've ever seen. It's not the clearest, it's got like a little milky tint to mm. it, but we made it to Lake Sorapis and there is quite a bit of people up here since we did the counterclockwise loop over the pass. And it is about just before 11 a.m. and anytime past noon, you're definitely gonna have hundreds of people up here. So check out and hang out at the lake for a little bit and then we're gonna head back to the car so we can take you on our next adventure to Trechime.
finally off the trail and it's just about 1 p.m. so it took us about four and a half hours with breaks to fly the drone and also to get lunch at the lake. A beautiful lake. It was very light milky turquoise blue. Reminded me a lot of Laguna 69 when we were in Peru. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. We did 2200 so 2200 feet of ascent total. We'll definitely share the uh, trail information in the uh, YouTube description if you're interested in our all trails uh, routes. Probably the most crowded we've seen in quite a while here in shoulder season than Dolomites, but when you come out, you're gonna see hundreds of people. So start early. Start early. Start around 7, 7.30, even earlier if you can, but yeah, not bad. This video was filmed in mid-September as many would consider this as shoulder season in the Italian Dolomites. Temperatures were fairly warm during the day, at times we needed a light to medium jacket, but it chilled off at night for added layers. We only had one day of rain during our entire 14 days visiting this area. Of our little house in the Italian Dolomites. We got four bedrooms actually. We had room with twin beds. Large upstairs bathroom. <laughs> Twin bed, which we use as a storage for our bags. <laughs> Cute little living room. With patio. Kitchen. Pretty tight, but does the job, has everything you need. Another bathroom. And then, hey, fourth bedroom with the twin beds. So there's three rooms with twin beds and then a large room. We'll definitely uh, drop the link in the uh, description. Next up on our must-see places in the Italian Dolomites is the Alpa de Susi. We took a day trip and drove two hours west from Cortino di Ampezzo. Spanning over 22 square miles, Alpa de Susi is Europe's largest mountain plateau or high-altitude alpine meadow in Europe, located in the Trentino Alto Adige region of northern Italy has endless networks of gondolas, biking and hiking trails, and good skiing in the winter. We took the Alpa de Suisi cable car or gondola up. It cost around 29 euro per adult round trip. And once you were up on the plateau, you could walk in many directions for a hike. Many of the trails are gravel or dirt roads without big elevation changes up or down, but there's still plenty of hikes in the area if you want a challenge. We'll definitely drop some links for some hikes in the YouTube description below. There are other cable cars once you get up further the mountain, but they do cost additional between 10 to 15 euro each way. Are you posing for me? Oh. Posing for me. A tip we wanted to share is that the Alpa de Susi Road to Gilar Cantenaccio Natural Park is closed to car traffic between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And during this time, it can only be reached via the Alpa de Susi cable car or by bus. The bus schedule runs frequently in the summer. But if you do book accommodations on the Alp, for example, in Campaccio, you'll be able to access Alpa de Susi by car. In the mid-season periods from November to the beginning of December and from April to the end of May, the cable car is closed and the road on the Alpa de Susi up to Campaccio remains open. One of the activities we wish we had time to do was to rent a bike and ride throughout the gravel roads of the Alpa de Susi plateau. It seemed like so many people were enjoying the ride around the beautiful summertime weather, so we highly recommend that if you have time for that outdoor activity. Next up on our list for top places to see in the Italian Dolomites is the Cinque Torri area. There are five prominent peaks in this area and the largest being Torre Grande. The highest peak is about 2300 meters, so around 7,700-ish feet tall. And it's incredible because right when you get up on the gondola, you can pretty much go off any direction and there are trails everywhere. And it's very accessible if you don't want to hike far, you don't even have to hike more than five, 10 minutes to get to some beautiful areas uh, to explore. Cinque Torre not only provides spectacular hiking trails winding through breathtaking landscapes, but it also served as the backdrop to a unique historical chapter for Italy. During World War I, these natural towers witnessed epic clashes between Italian and Austro-Hungarian troops. You will be transported back in time as you walk through the open air museum when you meander through these bunkers. Tripped. This area is bursting with beauty and I must say it really warms my heart to be able to share it with Tim's parents because there's not so many places in the world that you can just take a gondola to and hike up and see these views, literally panoramic views of the mountain. 
We have a separate video on Cinque Torre if you want to learn more about this area, and we'll definitely share the link above where you can find the link in the description below. Make sure to tap that subscribe button and bell to get notifications when our new videos drop two to three times per month. We are in the first few days of fall and you can already see the foliage changing, the pops of red are already coming through, and with the sun hitting the mountainsides and the valleys here in the Cinque Torre, it's absolutely stunning. What do you think, Tom? It's, I think it's spectacular. Highly recommend? Highly rec recommend getting up here. Not with your mom. <laughs> The Italian Dolomite Mountain sits between the three countries of Switzerland, Austria, and Italy. They are majestic protectors of an area filled with beautiful scenery packed with rich culture and customs. Next up on our list of must-see places in the Italian Dolomites include Tre Cime del Lavoredo. Some of them waited for two hours to get in one day. It's also good that they can limit how many people go up to them. What's the hold up? A fun fact we learned was that the Dolomites, also known as the Pale Mountains, get their unique color from the stunning hues during sunrise and sunset. Archaeologists discovered marine fossils suggesting these majestic peaks were once underwater formed around 280 million years ago, and over this time transformed through shifts and erosions, evolving into the mesmerizing Dolomite Mountains that we know and marvel at today. We made it to the Tre Cime area, and today we are going to be hiking the Cima del Lavoredo Trail. We are going to be fast packing it, so what that means is that we're going lighter pack. We were going to trail run most of it, but my Achilles and my heel isn't doing so well this morning, and we have to be mindful of it before Nepal and the long Annapurna circuit, so we're going to just fast hike it today, so hopefully beat not only beat the crowds, be able to enjoy all the sights along the way. Wow, there's a really loud sports car um, down in the valley. We did read from the trail reviews that doing the route counterclockwise is the most ideal because there is a steep rock field you have to go down, so we'll definitely keep you posted how that goes. The trail around Tre Chime, Tre Chime <laughs> is somewhere around six to six and a half miles if you do the full loop. Otherwise, from the refugio, you could just go to the right or to the left and kind of just do an out and back. There's great views everywhere. And uh, it's about a 1,500 feet of elevation gain, so not too bad. For the full loop. For the full loop, yeah. As you can see behind me, the famous Trechime. Look at the beautiful scenery. It's like the first stop on the trail is come up on the cool little chapel. The cows, they're so cute. So the Refugio Laborero is not open, maybe in the summertime, but not this time of year. Heard it is cash only though, if you decide to come up here. like we're going through some elevation a little bit. There's a map of all the trails. These majestic peaks, also known as the Three Sisters, stands as an icon of the Italian Alps, providing breathtaking experiences for both hiking enthusiasts and history buffs. This area spans across five square miles or 13 square kilometers. This would be a perfect trail run because the trail is very wide and there aren't big boulders like in a bunch of other areas of the upper alpine and the dolomites. Pretty small rocks, like gravelly. Definitely still have to be careful with some of the loose rock. Helen and I were just discussing how this Trecime area kind of reminds us of Torres del Paine in Patagonia in South America. Very beautiful spires. It doesn't have that beautiful blue lake at the top, but the spires are kind of similar. So we were just saying the minute you go past the two-ish mile mark, you tend to weed out a lot of people. People kind of go towards the base of the, the spires and then they drop off. So if you want a little bit of solitude, definitely do the counterclockwise loop here in Trechime.
so we are at the second refugio on the trail called the Dresden Hut. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but just when you think you can't see any more beauty on this trail, we are greeted with these beautiful alpine lakes. It's a great vantage point from up here at one of the refugios. So beautiful, look at this. It's about 1500 feet. Now hiking through a beautiful green meadow. Definitely cool to see the all the different types of terrain in this beautiful loop. The uphill, third one on the loop. Not too bad when you can split it up into a few different sections. We are at about 7,300 feet of elevation here in the upper pass. Breathing hard. Just went up a really steep section. Not bad. If that's the last bit of ascent, then we'll take it. Looks like we're coming up on a, another refugio, and this one's actually open, probably because it's closer to the upper main refugio. People are sitting out on the patio enjoying a drink. We would, but we have to catch up with Tim's parents. Our theory with the refugios is maybe they do open after <laughs> a certain hour. We did get started on the trail quite early, around 8.30. So we just saw a sign where it mentions a through hike of the Dolomites, Alta Via di Dolomiti. Nice panoramic view. Not too shabby, huh? Not too shabby. Wow. <laughs> Coming on the other side. Yesterday, Helen and I did the Lago Sorpis hike and directly out, directly out to our 12 o'clock is the trail. Can't see it from here, but you know the terrain. Beautiful valley over there. See, the main refugio, once we turn this bend here, these rock piles are unnecessary. They really impact the environment. It's like we made it back just before 11 o'clock. Took us about two and a half hours for a fast walk, run pace. Well, the, the whole trail was 6.2 miles and we did about 1,100, 1,200 feet of ascent. Highly recommend this area. Distance views of all the mountains in the area. It's like they serve oh, patrons. Right We're counting how many cars are here. At the Chime right now. 20, 21, 34, 35. 57 cars waiting on a Wednesday. That's not bad considering. Yeah. Well, I thought it'd be worse. This is our last hike in the Dolomites. We're really sad to be leaving, but we're going back into Germany and going to Oktoberfest. We hope you enjoyed our adventures here in the Italian Dolomites. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and also like the video if you enjoyed watching. We will definitely see you on the next trail. Prost.